Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixine Publishing, and I'm coming to you from the United States. And we're meeting today again with Adrian Nixon, our editor in chief of the Nixine Journal. Um, Adrian's coming to us from Yorkshire, England. Hi, Adrian. How are you today? I'm great, Debbie. How are you? I'm doing well, and thank you so much for for working together on these videos. This is an it's awful just lot. irresistible fun, isn't it? It really is. Um, so today. Uh, to talk about something, um, I know I've been saying this lately, a little bit different, but each time we have something just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And this one is white graphenes. I've heard about it, and I know that it is hexa hexagonal boron nitride. Exactly, right, spot on. What is hexagonal boron nitride, and what is white graphene? Why is it called white graphene? Right, you'll remember that that is one of the repeating units in graphene. So that six-membered ring just repeats and repeats and repeats like chicken wire. That's all made of carbon atoms. Now white graphene looks similar and except that these now are made up of different atoms so it's the same structure it's it's still flat um, but now we've got nitrogen boron nitrogen boron nitrogen boron it's um, very similar. Um, nitrogen boron are very close to carbon in the periodic table as well so they're the sizes are uh, not far off different as well. But this can form flat sheets just like graphene can. Okay, so um, are they calling it white graphene because it's shaped like it, it lines up like it, or is it the color itself? Good questions. Yes to most of that. Um, it's, called, it's called graphene, it has graphene in the title because it looks like graphene so it forms this chicken wire and actually when you look at the material in the bulk it is white, so it's pure white, whereas Graph graphene powder is black, um, single crystal graphene uh, is slightly different and that's metallic, but we'll do um, another video about single crystal and polycrystalline graphene next week. So okay. we'll talk about that later. So now we want to dive down to white graphene. So for that, do you mind if I share my screen again? Here's the white graphene, just expanded out a bit, and you can see this hexagonal structure, the chicken wire structure, which looks very, very similar to the graphene. And like graphene can form graphite by stacking up in layers, Van der Waals structures, if you remember, then yeah. boron nitride or hexagonal boron nitride um, can stack up the same way. And, and it's important to call this hexagonal boron nitride because the, um, the layers here form the, in these hexagonal rings. There is another form of boron nitride which doesn't form these flat structures. So we're more interested in 2D materials. That's why we're specific about calling it hexagonal boron nitride. And then when it's laid out, um, it acts very similar to graphene. It's similar in some ways in structure to graphene, but it has very different properties. As you can see on the other side of the, um, the screen over here, HBN is the, uh, the short way of describing hexagonal boron nitride. HBN is a, an electrical insulator, so it doesn't conduct electricity. Whereas graphene uh, is the world's best conductor of electricity. So we have an insulator. HBN is nearly as strong as graphene because those sp2 bonds in the lattice here are some of the, again, some of the strongest in nature. So it's not quite as strong as graphene, but it's almost as strong and it would be white in appearance. You might think, well, what's HBN used for? Well, it's one of those 2D materials, those other 2D materials, and it will stack up with graphene. And it turns out that it's actually used, HBN is actually used to encapsulate or uh, cap off and uh, bottom off stacks of graphene and graphite um, that people researching 2D materials are uh, looking at. And not only them, but all the other 2D materials will be capped with HBN. The highest quality uh, hexagonal boron nitride is single crystal. Normally you can get this, at the moment the highest quality graphene comes from graphene flakes. Do you remember the sellotape uh, experiment, Debbie? where they first discovered graphene. Yeah, the sticky tape where they peeled off each of the layers and, and, and was, they were able to, to isolate just a yes. thing. Yes. Yeah, well, you can do the same thing with, with uh, white graphene or HBN, and then you can put it back on and uh, encapsulate the graphene layers. And the, the people in the uh, National Graphene Institute and other researchers around the world, but the uh, NGI is particularly good at this, their researchers are now very good at taking these one atom thick or one atom thin layers and laying them and sandwiching them up together. And they can actually do this in the lab. It's amazing the skills these guys have. But there is one interesting thing. 
you need to get a source of white graphene. Now, graphite is the source of uh, high quality graphene at the minute for the research community. You can't just dig hexagonal boron nitride out of the ground. It turns out that um, it needs to be made in the lab in a very, very strong press. And there's one laboratory in the world, we, um, Nature published uh, an article about this last year, um, where there is uh, Professor T Takashi Teniguchi, who is uh, the lead researcher in making these uh, HBN crystals. And you can see that he's leaning into a, a very, very multiple hundreds of tons strong hydraulic press. And you can just see above his head the, uh, the little anvil there, which forces all that force down onto a simmer anvil below. And he's the best one in the world for actually making HBN. So everybody gets his HBN from him. And as a result, um, they quote him on their um, academic papers. So he ends up being one of the most quoted professors in the academic community, <laughs> just by supplying everybody with the HBN that they need. Yeah, he'd be pretty interesting to talk to, wouldn't he? He would be, yes. Yeah, yeah. we haven't talked to him yet, have we? No. Might have to see if we can get hold of him then. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian, thank you so much for explaining this. Um, white graphene, something different. Yeah. So we and what else they use it for, right? Uh, oh, it'll be used for all sorts of things, but that's probably longer than we've got time for in this video. All right. Well, great. Thank you for your time today, and we'll see you next time.